sun to Yeah, we do. Come on and say we do. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Well, if anybody had a reason to sing, yes, we do. Come on and say we do. Yeah, if anybody has a reason to sing. Yeah, we do. Come on and say we do. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Let's take a little high. Lord, if anybody has a reason to. Yeah, we do. Come on and say we do. Yeah, if anybody has a reason to. Yeah, we do. Come on and say we do. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's take a little high. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody had a reason to. Yeah, we do. Come on and say we do. Oh, oh if anybody had a reason to. Yes, we do. Dale Crest, we do. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Lord have mercy. We thank God for this opportunity that he has extended to each and every one of us for the purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. We recognize that God is a mighty good God who is worthy to be praised. He blesses us in spite of us and bestows us with blessings that we do not deserve. And for that we ought to be eternally and immeasurably grateful. I'm thankful, my wife is thankful to be a part of this historic happening. It is not, I, I, I've, never, I've never seen an outgoing preacher come back to install the incoming preacher. I think that's the way God wants it to take place. Uh, when you do it that way, you're doing it the Lord's way. We just thank God for this opportunity and and hopefully I'll share a word with you that will bless you. I want to thank Brother Houston, the minister of the Dale Crest Church of Christ, uh, for this opportunity to stand in the messengers of this house pulpit. Looks kind of familiar. <laughs> uh, to share with you a word from Almighty God. We want to go to the Old Testament uh, I, I, I shan't be long. We do know that there is a great meal prepared for all of us and a wonderful program in the afternoon. First Kings chapter 17, beginning at verse number 8. And we shall see if there be a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may Go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. 
And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, and neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, and neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. From this, I want to lift the subject for your consideration. From empty barrels to enormous blessings. From empty barrels to enormous blessings. When we look at one of the highlights of Elijah's life, uh, we would immediately point to 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, when he did battle with the 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, we all know the showdown at Mark Carmel and how God got the glory through his servant, the man of God, Elijah. Uh, but what happened in 1 Kings chapter 18 uh, didn't just happen. There were a series of situations that led up to 1 Kings chapter 18. Elijah was in training. Uh, he was in training as the prophet of God, as the man of God. And God says, I, I want you to learn how to depend on me, even when situations appear to be hopeless. Uh, you need to know how to trust in me and turn to me for everything that you need in order to have success in your ministry. We recognize that Ahab and uh, Elijah had a conversation and Ahab uh, chased him away and God told him to hide in the brook at Cherith and there I will take care of you. Uh, there he was able to drink from the stream and ravens brought food on their wings to feed him in the morning and in the evening. But then one day the brook dried up. I've come by to let you know you can't always stay where you are. You got to move on to another level. God will sometimes allow things to dry up in your life just to move you to where he wants you to be. And so when things have dried up, it's time for you to seek the face of the Lord and move in the direction that God wants you to move. He says, listen, your blessings have stopped right here, but I'm going to take you to a new level, but at this new level, you'll deal with the new devil, but I'm the same God uh, that sustained you at the brook, and I'm going to sustain you where I'm taking you. And so he says, there, I want you to go to Zarephath. You're going to find a widow there. Now, now, two things come to mind. A widow, number one, uh, when a drought occurred or a famine occurred, usually the first folk to die off are widows because widows depended on their husbands to take care of them. They depended on their husbands to put a roof over their head, uh, give them shelter, and give them protection. But this woman had no husband. And on top of that, she was unable not only to take care of herself, but she was unable to take care of her son. But then the second issue is that it's Zarephath. Zarephath is the hometown of Jezebel. Uh, it was a hundred mile journey from Cherith to Zarephath. And you had to go through territory that was under the dominion of King Ahab. Ahab is looking. He's looking for Elijah. He wants to kill Elijah. And God gives him a path that leads him through Ahab territory just to bring him uh, to where the blessing is going to take place. Sometimes God's instructions don't make sense. Sometimes we can't figure God out. We wonder, Lord, why is it that you're sitting me here? Why can't I go another route? He says, I got you right where 
I want you because if you can't handle the burden, you can't appreciate the blessing. I, I, I got you. I need you to know I got you. Just, just walk with me. Just follow my guidance. Follow my footsteps. You'll see what I prepared all along. You got to understand uh, that God doesn't deal with time uh, like you and I. God sees the end uh, from the beginning. Uh, when you are smack dab uh, in the middle of the situation, uh, God is not at the end. Uh, he's already working uh, on your next situation. Uh, that's just the God that we serve. And so there he finds this woman he already told this woman, I need you to take care of my man. Right. Lord have mercy. I'll be where y'all want to be in just a New York moment. Right. <laughs> he sees this woman and says, woman, fetch me some water. I, I just left a brook a hundred miles away that dried up on a brother. Fetch me some water. And while she was going to get the water, he throws another request at her. Give me a morsel. She said, look, you asking for too much. You don't know my situation. I ain't got a husband. I got a boy I can barely take care of. I can barely take care of myself. You are asking for too much. She says, listen, all I got is two sticks, a handful of meal in a barrel and an oil, little oil in a cruise. That's all I got. This was my plan. Yeah, yeah listen carefully. This was my plan. We, I, I was going to make a cake. Me and my boy, we're going to eat the cake. And then after, after we eat the cake, we're going to die. He said, all right, that's interesting plans, uh, but, but listen, fear not. I, I, I love this. Fear, 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 fear not. Now, now, I want you to see what's transpiring here because God sends the man of God from where he was all the way to another place to be a blessing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I, I need you to see. But, but you're going to find out that the blessing not only came from the man of God, but where the man of God was sent to serve. There was a reciprocation of blessings in 1 Kings chapter 17. So, so just fasten your seat, best. I'm almost through. Just, just fasten your seat. She said, look, you just do what you're going to do, but here's what I want you to do. Make me a cake first. Make me a cake. You take what little you say you have and you make me a cake first. And after that, take care of yourself and your son. Who, Lord, have mercy. Here, Elijah represents God. And if you notice, when he gives this woman these instructions, there is not a prophecy, there is not a promise, because it is not about prophecy, it's not about promise, it's about priority. When you put God first, everything will fall into place. I just believe that's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, take care, make me a cake. Can you see her? Now, I'm one of those visual students of the Bible. Can you see her off in the corner after making the cake, gives it to Elijah, and he just throwing down on the last of what she thinks is the last of her meal. She said, ain't got no more meal. Ain't got no more oil. Ain't got no reason to go get sticks. And he's just feeding on this thing. I mean, he's just grubbing on this food. Elijah, he knows something's about to happen. Because she took care of the man of God. And let me just drop this. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pitch my 
my Martin Tabernacle here just for a moment. Take care of the man of God. When you take care of God's man, God will take care of you. When you, when you pray for God's man, when you lift up God's man, when you appreciate God's man, when you say thank you Lord for God's man, God will take care of you. Elijah is, is satisfied, he's full and is satisfied. Her stomach is still growling. See the boy's bones in his body. That, that, I'm telling you, I'm visual. Yeah, y'all can't see that in the text. That's just what I see when I read 1 Kings chapter 17. And so we find that she had a plan, but her plan wasn't God's plan. You see, even when you participate in the plan of God, you can do so without fully understanding what it is you are doing. What you need is faith to act on the instructions of the word of God and then let God take care of the rest. God does not have to reveal the totality of his plan uh, in order for you to buy into it uh, and participate and do what it is uh, he wants you to do. God does not have to dot every I and cross every T uh, before he gets your agreement to be in covenant relationship with him uh, to do the very thing that he has set out to do. Uh, God says, I want your trust. I want your faith. I want your obedience. Uh, and then once you get at the end of this thing, uh, you will see what what I've been doing uh, all along. Uh, some folk have difficulty in the faith department. Uh, that's why they're not as busy as they can be uh, because they're waiting to see the end uh, from where they are. God says, listen, uh, it ain't always about the destination. Uh, it's about the journey uh, and moving uh, where God wants you to move, uh, even when you can't see uh, was at the end uh, of the road. Uh, this woman says, listen, uh, I'm hungry. My son's hungry. He ate what I thought was the last of the food. Uh, but God is going to work it out somehow. I, I don't know how. I, I don't know when. I, I don't know where. I don't know through whom. But God is going to work it out. I, and so I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on believing. And, and I'm going to live in testimony to let you know that it works. When you put it all in God's hands, it works. This man, legend tells of a man who who was walking through a hot desert, baking in the sun. He finds an old shack that was roofless and windowless, just to shade himself from the heat. And then in this, in this shack, he sees a water pump. He goes over there and starts pumping the water. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Nothing comes out. And then he sees a jug over on the other side of the shack has dirt on it and so he has to he has to wipe the dirt off the jug and it says if you will prime the pump then water will flow but you got to take this water over here take it to the pump and prime the pump and see what happens now this man has a decision to make because he's thirsty right now and he don't know if these aged instructions on the jaw are true. And so here it is. I, what am I going to do? I can drink it and live and keep on moving. Or I can prime the pump just to see if cool, refreshing water is going to come out. Finally, he decided to, to, to prime the pump with the water. He went over and started pumping. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Nothing. Squeak, squeak, squeak. A few drops. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Now the water is gushing. Oh, he's, 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 he's drinking his water like this is going to be the last water he's going to ever drink. Water like he never tasted before. And so he was instructed, listen, when you are through pumping it, make sure you fill up the jug for the next traveler. And so he filled it up, but then he added some instructions. Uh, he added some words, rather, to the instructions. He said, if you do it, rather, he said, believe me, 
It works. If you give your all, it will come back to you again. He says, listen, the next man that finds it will have some instructions uh, that if I can just give it all, I don't know what I'm going to get in return, but if I just got enough faith to, to give it all, then I know that something somehow, some way, somewhere is going to come back to me. Uh, isn't that what faith is? Uh, faith is doing uh, the unexpected uh, that you might put yourself in a position uh, to receive the impossible. Uh, that's faith. And that's what this woman had. I believe there may be somebody in here in a hopeless situation. You're, you're down to your last dime. Hopeless situation. More month than money. Hopeless situation. Kids acting up. Hopeless situation. Husband done lost his mind. Wife won't cook your dinner. Hopeless situation. Things just aren't going the way you think they should go. Hopeless situation. I've come by to let you know that when you get down to gathering your sticks and when you start looking in your barrel just to see how much meal you have left, I want you to do so with the mindset that God has always been an expert in taking small things uh, and doing great things with it. Uh, you need to understand that your situation is not as hopeless as you think it is. Uh, the devil is a liar. Don't let the devil deceive you and cause you to realize that God is not active in your life. God still sits on high and looks down low and God is ready to take what little bit you have uh, because when you put it in God's hands it makes a world of difference. Uh, this woman didn't know what was going to happen but now she recognized uh, that she had more meal than she ever thought she would have. She had more oil than she thought she would ever have. She had more cakes than she thought she would ever have uh, all because she trusted uh, in the word of almighty God. Uh, now it didn't say that a barrel overflowed uh, it didn't say that meal was just overflowing uh, in the barrel but she just had enough to take her through each and every day until God finally decided uh, to send a rain upon the earth uh, I'm not going to overflow it uh, but I'll just give you enough uh, is there anybody I just need 10 folk in here that can come to the realization uh, that I'm going to thank God uh, even for enough uh, I ain't got to drive a Benz uh, if I got a Pinto that can get me uh, from point A to point B. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I ain't got to eat filet mignon uh, every night uh, if I got pork and beans and wieners. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, God, for enough. Uh, we ought to learn uh, how to thank God uh, for enough. Uh, stop complaining uh, about what we don't have uh, because we're looking at somebody else. Uh, you thank God uh, for the enough that he's blessed you with. And if you learn how to appreciate him for the enough, he may bless you with more. About to take my sanctified seat. But there's something in there. Because I believe when you go into a text, you ought to find Jesus. You can search high, you can search low, but you can find Jesus. Because Jesus is all. He's all up in there. This woman said, listen, she was very specific about what she was going to do in her plans. I have two sticks. I'm going to dress this food. Me and my boy going to die. Just two sticks and we're going to die. It's amazing what God can do with two sticks. Shh. This woman stirred, stirred it with this, these two sticks and perhaps set the two sticks on the side and said, that's it, that's all folks. It's time to check out, it's time to reunite with my dead husband. But when God gets in the process, your mindset changes when it comes to the two sticks because God then was able to take those two sticks and do more for her 
than she thought could be done. But that's not the only time God dealt with two sticks. For God recognized the world was in a hopeless situation. He recognized that some folk were swimming in the cesspool of sin. He recognized that the world was without power, without hope, without God, having no promises in the world. He recognized that the world cannot do anything in and of itself to reconcile themselves back to God. So God, even before the foundation of the world, had two sticks in mind. The Bible says in Revelation 13 and verse number 8 that he was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What is he doing? He's making preparations to give provision to folk who are in hopeless situations. There may be somebody right now who's been written off by family, who's been written off by friends, who've been written off by family because of all that's going on in your life. But I want you to know that if you just keep your mind on those two sticks, everything thing uh, is going to be all right uh, because these two sticks were in God's mind uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, God knew that these two sticks would come together at one point in history uh, and make it possible for every man, every boy, every woman, and every girl uh, to be saved. Uh, God knew that one day his only begotten son uh, would carry one of those sticks uh, up the dusty road uh, of Jerusalem, uh, take it to a place called Golgotha, and there be next nailed uh, to the cross. Uh, can't you see God's son being nailed uh, to the two sticks? Uh, his hands being nailed. Uh, hands that cause the blind to see. Uh, hands that cause the deaf to hear. Uh, hands that made the crooked straight. Uh, hands that turned water into wine. Hands uh, were nailed to the cross. Uh, then they nailed his feet to the two sticks. Uh, feet that walked on water. Feet that were cleansed by the tears of that sinner woman. Her feet were nailed to the cross. Uh, and there they pierced him in the side uh, while he was on uh, the two sticks and uh, they took his body off of the two sticks and laid it in Joseph's new tomb uh, early Sunday morning. Uh, God's son got up early Sunday morning. Uh, he said all power early Sunday morning. Uh, he conquered death early Sunday morning. Uh, he took the power from death and the devil early Sunday morning. Uh, he rose never to die again. Uh, his feet were on resurrection ground uh, for 40 days. Uh, and then he was taken out of their sight uh, on the cloud. Uh, he's coming back in like manner. Uh, but he wants you to know before I come back, uh, you don't have to stay uh, in your hopeless situation. Uh, but God took two sticks and made it possible for you to be saved. Uh, he took two sticks and made it possible for you your life to be transformed. Uh, he took two sticks and made it possible for you to be a different person. Uh, he took two sticks and made it possible for you to have all spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm eloquently elated, uh, hippopotamously happy and peacock proud uh, that I've been saved uh, because of the two sticks. Uh, I can walk around free uh, in Christ Jesus uh, because of what Jesus did uh, on the two sticks. Uh, it's is there anybody that stands in need uh, of two sticks? Uh, you see what it did for the widow at Zarephath, uh, but understand what it's able to do for you. Uh, God can take you from a bad person uh, and make you a good person. Uh, he can take you from a good person and make you a better person. Uh, he can take you from a better person and make you the best person uh, that you thought you could never be. Uh, all because nearly 2,000 years ago, uh, God's son and Mary's baby died on two sticks. You ought to come to him. You are hopeless right now because you have yet to try Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen to my life, preacher. I, I just don't know. I've been living this way all my life. I, I, I've gotten used. I've gotten comfortable to my lifestyle. Just don't know if I'm ready to give it all up. I just don't know God can do for me what I think cannot be done. You put your trust in the gospel of Jesus. You follow the instructions of the Lord and you leave it up to God to take care of the rest. Well, preacher, how, how, how can I get the blessing of the two sticks? It's a simple plan. Simple plan. 
Nothing has to hit you at the top of the head to come out the bottom of your feet. You ain't got to shake, rattle, roll, foam at the mouth. You ain't got to do none of that. All you got to do is come to Jesus. All you got to do is come to Jesus and realize that only Jesus can turn your life around. Can you imagine your life being better than what it is right now? Just look at the catalog of the calamities that you've experienced in your life and ask yourself the question, can it really get better? Is this too good to be true? No, it's not too good to be true. It is true. And it's the truth that can set you free. There's nothing, nothing scarier, nothing more depressing than seeing somebody walk around in bondage. It's time for you to be freed. It's time for you not to be a victim of your circumstances, but a victor over your circumstances. And only God can make that happen. It's time even for children of God to stop playing the victim. Stop living beneath your privilege as children of God and recognize that he still sits on high and looks down low and has the power to turn your life around. No more woe is me, but great is God. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. If you send me an invitation to your pity party, I'm going to put it in the fireplace because I know God is too good and God is too powerful. If you just turn to him and trust in him, he'll turn your life. I just, I'm just foolish enough to believe that. He can take your empty barrels and give you enormous blessings. Now, if you're ready to exchange your empty barrel for an enormous blessing, this is what you do. When we stand up and sing the Savior's invitation, you will come forward. That, that's what you do. You say, listen, I've been tired. I'm tired of toting this empty barrel around. I'm tired. I'm tired. I want something better. I want change in my life. Well, you can come up and you can give me your empty barrel. And the Lord will give you enormous blessings. He'll do that just for you because he loves you. He loves you so much. I say all the time, if God had a refrigerator in heaven, your picture would be on it. He loves you so much. Embrace God's love this day. Give up your empty barrels and make room for his enormous blessings. How do I do that? You've heard what Jesus did for you. You've heard the gospel of Jesus. You've got to believe it. You've got to put all your trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not in your righteousness. Because your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But you put it in the gospel because in the gospel is the righteousness of God. That's the righteousness you ought to be looking for. You ought to repent of your sins. Turn from your sin. Turn to God. Confess him to be the son of God and put him on in the water grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. And you will exchange your empty barrel for an enormous blessing. For those who are in Christ Jesus, as a result of being baptized into Christ, have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. And if you are a child of God and you're just tired of feeling defeated, you're tired of not knowing how to navigate through hopeless situations in your life, you're pulling all of your hair out your head, you're funding weave stores. <laughs> Y'all come back to Jesus, come back. Don't pull your hair out. Don't do that. I know somebody's going to say something, but that's all right. I'm having a blast just being here. But turn it over to the Lord. Pick your head up and walk like you are royalty because you are. You are. And so we're going to ask you to stand to your feet right now. You know, some of y'all thinking right now, this is show enough a miracle. <laughs> and, and, and before we are led in the invitation song, we want you to come forward. We want you to exchange your empty barrel for enormous blessings. Even if you're a child of God, you're, you're carrying around empty barrels because you have yet to trust the Lord to do what he said he would do if you were but come to him. Did he not say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Did he not say that? 
in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Why not take him at his word? Did he not say, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you? Did he not say that I can do all that? Paul not say, I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengthens me. Did Isaiah not say, no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper? Did not John say in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? And so why do you sit defeated? Let me rephrase that. Why do you stand defeated? Come. Come to him. Come to the fountain of blessings. His arms are long enough to take every empty barrel in here. Let him do it. Let him do it. And you'll be thankful that he did. As we sing the Savior's invitation, we're going to be praying and urging for you to come as we sing. I am thine, I'm O thine. Lord, Lord I'm yours. I have heard, I've heard thy voice I've heard. and it told Come exchange your empty barrel to me. Exchange your empty barrel and leave with an enormous blessing. Leave with a blessing. There ought to be somebody. There ought to be somebody. Ought to be somebody who's ready. And be close. Who's ready? Don't leave here without your blessing. Lord, draw me near. Let God draw you. Let him draw you near to where the blessing is. Bless the Lord to the cross. Where thy 